They pay for the privilege of gathering on weekends to play historical war games. The ancient and medieval martial arts society was founded over 15 years ago by a group of military history buffs as a practical outlet for their enthusiasm. This chain mail is made from dozens of wire coat hangers and like all the society's armor, weapons and costumes, it's manufactured by the members themselves who come from every walk of life. Gladiator John Harris is a machinist. His brother Peter is a truck driver. They've researched and developed this recreation of a typical Roman gladiatorial combat from the first century AD. John is a mermillion, slower moving than his opponent, but more heavily armored. Peter is a Lacirii, armed with trident and lariat, wearing no protection except a shoulder guard. With the exception of killing one another, you, you're sort of practically reliving the, the battles that were fought because uh, the very mechanics of the fighting, uh, we try and get it as close as the original as it is possible also, you see. In the Gallic Wars, a standard tactic by the Roman legionary was to transfix the shield of his opponent with his seven-foot heavy spear. In the subsequent hand-to-hand -hand combat, the legionary would press his foot onto the shaft of the spear, dragging down the impaled shield, leaving the goal vulnerable to a deadly thrust. Oh, Here, Dave Robinson, a professional photographer, takes on Ralph Grindley, a computer operator, in a 6th century Viking axe duel, fought by the chiefs to settle personal or legal disputes. Combat under these conditions must have required more stamina than skill. Well, they were, they were pretty fit. You've only got to put a suit of armour on, a full male hauberk weighing about 40 odd pounds and run around the block a couple of times to realise that they were really fit men. Jousting with real lances is another popular attraction at charity performances. In armour weighing 50 pounds apiece, the Harris brothers will each genuinely try to unhorse the other. As often happened in 13th century tournaments, the combat continued with broadswords. Till one knight was declared the winner on points. Next comes the society's traditional test of courage and skill for its members. A needle-sharp lance, a cigarette packet and nerves of steel are essential ingredients for this show-stopping feat. With us, it's man to man, it's a test of your strength and your, of your fitness. We don't pre-decide who's going to win our combats, each guy goes out there to win. The likely favourite in this combat would seem to be the Crusader. His traditional enemy, the Saracen, has a smaller shield and a lighter sword. But as the Crusaders discovered throughout the 12th century, mobility frequently wins over the heavy armour. Another group of historical devotees based in Melbourne is the Viking Society of Australasia. When they're not out pillaging and looting, they stage authentic banquets, celebrating the lifestyle of the period, right down to the table manners. There's a certain type of chap, and woman of course, we do have women warriors, that get involved in this sort of thing. They're a little bit different. You wouldn't call them loners, but they're different somehow. Trial Castle, a lavish replica of a fortress in the Middle Ages, is an ideal venue for the society to display its expertise in medieval martial arts. Every second Sunday we put on a show there for the whole day. This is the broomstick approach to jazz. Apparently it's quite a pleasing show to the public because we dress up in the armour of the Vikings and the costume of the Vikings and uh, bash the hell out of each other virtually. 
Especially for the Danger Freaks cameras, the Viking Society staged their version of a 16th century siege. Then the knights on horseback would generally charge and uh, be followed up by the foot soldiers. And it would sort of break down into one unholy melee. You'd have sort of bodies all over the place. You, the only way you could tell who was who by the plumes or by their insignia on their shields and so on, it would be just a complete free-for-all melee. Historians may wince at some of the theory of details, but the action is always vigorous and the society's attitude to accidental wounds is truly medieval. We've never had any really traumatic injuries. There's lots of uh, bent and broken bodies in the society. Uh, the usual cut head. Unless you lose a finger, it doesn't really rate a mention. Castle walls have been breached. Now the invaders pour in and start sacking the city with a convincing display of bloodlust. They must have been pretty bloody affairs, really, because uh, well, we get the odd cut and scratch and bruise, etc., in our fights, and they're blunt weapons. So you can imagine they'd be sort of filled with blood, arms lopped off, heads lopped off, and you know, they'd be slipping in gore, and so that. Uh, while we might like to sort of do this for kicks, up to within reasonable limitations, I don't think any of us would really like to.